So what are we talking about here? We're talking about stocks. What's the theme of this meeting? You know, what are we going to do? The big deal is this. Everybody wants to make money, but at the same time, it's important to not have huge drawdowns. It's crucial to not have huge drawdowns. So the mantra for this is, is so. And just to give you a little bit of background, I've been doing this since 1986. I supported a family of six doing this, living off investing profits. I'm not getting a paycheck since 2000, all right? That's when I got out of the finance side and just became a private investor and had a couple of different great trading partners and they're probably listening right now. A couple of them are VIPs. I say this a lot and it's a fact. People talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks. Go where they're voting. Let the stocks talk to you. And folks, how's that, how's that represented? Go where they're voting. Well, you can say it's uh, with price. Uh, it's with price. What else do we look at? Two things, price and volume. Look for stocks that when they break out, there is an explosion in volume. If you can do that, you will dramatically increase your potential for making money and you will dramatically increase your profitability. It works and it works great. I can't stress that enough. So what's the moral theme of this meeting? Well, how to get great returns with low drawdowns. As I said, I've been doing this a long time. And I read this quote years ago, you'll never go broke taking a profit. I'm going to say it again. You'll never go broke taking a profit. And now I need to tell you this. That's a lie. He said, whoa, what do you mean, Pat? You're crazy. No, if your losses are bigger than your profits, you'll go broke. So by default, what do we have to do? We have to stack the deck. You've got those fundamentals I just gave you, and you know they need to be in the top 40 or 50 industry groups. Now you've got a recipe for a great cake. Now let's put it to work. And you can say, well, boy, it sounds easy. Let's go. But the reason we're having this webinar today is to talk about controlling risk, how to keep your losses small. Somebody said, oh yeah, you know, I had, I had three stocks. I made 50 to 80% on them. I'm going to town. That's huge. Oh, that's just great. Um, did you have any other stocks? You know, any, anything else? Yeah, I had about three or four of them that didn't do so good. Oh, what happened? Well, I lost about 50 to 80% on each of them. Oh, oh, so what you're telling me is you don't have anything to show for it. Oh, okay. So what do we need to do? We need to control risk. And this is what I say all the time at Mission Winners. A clean and simple breakout from a base that a sixth grader could understand will give you a clean and simple exit point. A clean and simple entry point will give you a clean and simple exit point for a much smaller loss. Isn't that cool? You want me to show you? This is the real world. This is right here. You see PayPal right there. Breaks out. 10, 21, 20. Folks, just a couple months ago, this stock broke out. Look at the volume pickup. You see that? Pushed right through. Right through. And what's it do the next day? They take it right back down on fairly heavy volume, more than average daily volume. I'm going to do something for you. By the way, I have to share this with you. One of my degrees in psych is in psychology. And so I'm really big on what's going on between our ears. Okay. Need to share this with you. If you're going through a really rough time in some way, shape or form, settle down with the investing. Only the still pool reflects the, the stars. Make things clean and simple. If everything's muddied up, it will have a negative impact on your performance. It really will. I know it. I've been through it before. So here we go. Here's PayPal. That's a nice base. Okay. Had good volume here. Had good volume here. All right. It just, it's kind of a cup and a handle formation. What do we want to see? Just push through that line with volume. Oh, look, it does. That's a buy. That's a buy. Did we buy? Yeah, we did. Yes, we did. Okay, this was, just to clarify, 
October of this year. And what's it do? It does that. They take it right back down. It falls below the line. I say this all the time at Mission Winners with the VIPs, and I'm saying it to you because I care about you. It's good above the line and it's bad below the line. A lot of people talk about limiting losses between five, you know, seven to 10%. I will tell you this, really good investors, they want to keep their losses much smaller than that. Remember this, if you can't, and this is from Ed Sakota, if you can't sell for a small loss, pretty soon you're going to take the mother of all losses. And you'd say, well, this is okay. You know, everything was good. I'll, I'll wait. It'll be all right. You know, oh, 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 oh. You see this? All of a sudden, a little loss turns into a big problem. A big problem. Do you want that? I mean, folks, from here to here, you're talking 30 points. 30 points on a two. No, we don't do that. Keep losses very small. And again, I'm going to stress, stress this to you. Oh, and just to let you know a little bit more of my background, I used to periodically teach outdoor survival skills at how, higher elevations. All right. I, I'm talking 10, 12,000 feet and higher. You got to have rules. You have to know rules and you have to know tactics and you have to use them because if you don't, you could die. That's what I used to tell to the people. And the same thing is true here. You may not die physically, but you could die financially. And I don't want to do that. So we control risk. Never argue with it. Price is always, price is always right. If we remember that, life's good. Makes it easy. So we're taking a look at this right here. As I said, it lifts off and then it fails. But what do you do? You got to get out of it. Just run it that way. Now, I want to show you a couple of more here just so you can see this. APPS, entry here, lifts up and it gives it back. Sell for a very small loss, which leads to another point for you. I encourage all of you, I do not day trade. I do not look at five minute charts. I rarely look at 10 minute charts. I don't know, you know, we're into the end of the year. I've probably looked at a five minute chart five times this year? I, I don't look at them. There's too much emotion in shorter time frames. Let bigger picture trends guide you. Lifts up, pulls back, sell. Finally, breaks out here, volume pickup, you buy. And it's marching on up. And what did we do? We sold some into strength. What does that do? I want you to think about this. Selling into strength. A, it guarantees a profit. You can say, Patrick, what do you mean by that? It's good above this spot and it's bad below. By selling a little bit off, not much, but selling some off, it guarantees a profit. This stock, which we own, VIPs own, this stock can come all the way back down to our price, our buy price. And we made a profit. Do you know how good that is? Do you know how good it feels psychologically to know that no matter what happens, you're going to make money? That's good investing. Here's another example. DQ right here. Keyless stock. As I said, people talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks. Look at the volume pickup on that bar. This was a keyless stock too. All these were keyless stocks. Got to stress. It's good above the line and it's bad below the line for a much smaller loss. I love that. As I said before, focus on stocks that are in leading groups. And I've got this all written down here. Look at this. It's on the chart. It's in an A plus rating group. When we bought this, it's in the top 10 groups. 99 composite rating, earnings up 175%, sales up 50%. By the way, I say it again, you don't need both, you just need one or the other. And what do we do? Lifts off, sell some into strength. We're in great shape. No, and I'll do this for you. I'll put this price alert right there. An up alert and a down alert. What do I do? I'll raise this up a little bit. If it starts to loot, go through this bar here, who knows, maybe sell a little bit more. But the bottom line is this, this stock 
given what we sold, this stock can come all the way back down to our purchase price. And you know what? From 48 to 69, do the math. That's good money. And that's what we're after. Here's another example. By the way, these are all real world examples. These are all key list stocks. These are all stocks VIPs own too, okay? So just, I wanna lay it out there for you, all right? This isn't hypothetical. This is not textbook. It's the real world. It's kind of like when I'm talking outdoor survival skills. What are you gonna do when the snow is doing this and then it starts to sleet and you're at a higher elevation? What are you gonna do? REGI. Look at the volume surge. Now, let's train our eyes. See the line? It's here, 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 which leads to another point for you. The more points that you can get that intersect that clean and simple line, the more people see it. The more people see it, the greater odds that they'll buy too. And isn't that what you want? The more people that see the clean and simple chart pattern, the better it is. So what does it do? And how, how can you tell people see it? People talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks. Go where they're voting. Folks, on this bar, this stock did 1.24 million shares. On this bar, two, almost 2.6 million shares? That's more than double the previous one. They voted. They bought it right there through the clean and simple line. Now, let's take it a step further. You know, the whole theme of this meeting is this. How can I keep low drawdowns? Hey, it's real simple. It's good above the line and it's bad below. If it starts falling, sell some, sell some. If it keeps falling, sell the rest. I can't stress that enough. They'll just push away. And it did. Isn't that nice? Look at that. That's good money. I can't stress it enough. These stocks are all vetted, by the way. Okay, I'm going to say it again. It's very, very important that we focus on stocks in leading groups that have either great earnings and or great sales in leading groups. Earnings up 101%, 291% last quarter. It's in the top 10 groups. That's how you stack the deck. And it worked. And again, I stress, the moral, the theme of this meeting is how to get great returns by and keeping drawdowns low. It's good above the white line, folks, and it's bad below, okay? Which leads to another point for you. Let's, let's go into this a little bit. There are different types of charts, um, charts, and I'm not talking chart formations. There's candlestick charts, there's bar charts. Find a system, find a type of chart that works for you. I like these. Why? And I'm going to explain why. Because each part, let's do this one right here. You see that little hash mark there? That's the open. See that to the left? That's the close. This is the high and this is the low. And there's the volume. Every day, I look at the chart and see what's going on. And I will tell you this, you quickly train your eyes and mind on what to look for. Is this a good bar? Yes, it closed above its open on a pickup in volume. Is this a good bar? It gaps up and closes near the high on good volume. Oh, you can, oh Pat, there's a red bar. Here's a red bar. I'm gonna do something for you. This is, this is advanced stuff that's gonna make you money and it ain't hard, okay? Right here, look at this. Somebody says, oh, that's a red bar. I want you to tell me real quick, right there's the open, there's the low, and this is the close. Did it close in the top fifth of its range for the day? Yes, yes, it did. Therefore, by default, this is still a good bar. It closed near the highs. This bar closed near the highs. This bar closed near the highs. This bar closed near the highs. See that? Gaps down, comes right down to what? And this is another valuable lesson for you. That sucker comes right down to the rising ADMA and bounces off of it. You think we're the only people in the world that know about the eight period exponential moving average? No, everybody uses it. It's awesome. If you don't, that's fine. 
By the way, this work on the eight period exponential moving average, we dovetailed off work that um, Ed Sakota had done. And my trading partner, who's probably listened to this from years ago, is my trading partner years ago, determining that eight period exponential, that's about a year and a half to two years of work almost every day, testing and testing and back testing different derivations before we finally came about. And then it's ironic. Folks, I'm going all the way back to like 1997, 98, 99. And then if you take a look around, a lot of people use the eight. And it's not because of us. It's that our hard work found it before most other people were talking about it. So I'm thankful for that. That's what we're after. It's good above the line. It's bad below the line. Now, let's look at a few more. I just want us to train our eyes and mind on what to look for. Right here, Shutterstock. Train your eyes. You can say, oh, Pat, I just, you know, I drew this line. You can say, what? Yeah, this was from before. We owned this. Okay, look at that. It's nice. Everything's great. How's this bar? Note the open on this bar. Note the close on that bar. So there's I. Notice the high here and the high here is about the same. There you go. And you don't need to be wired really tight here and say, oh, it's different by four cents. I mean, here, I'll tell you this. The high on this bar is 54.49. The high on this bar is 54.35. Hey, that's close enough for rocket science, okay? It's no big deal. Close enough for good investing. What do we want to see? I just want to push through that white line on good volume. There's nothing there, is there? Just going sideways. That's all right. Boom. Check this out. On this bar, the stock did 200,000 shares. When this thing broke out, it did 728,000 shares. You think everybody saw that clean and simple pattern? Yeah, they did. And it did this. Is that nice? Is that nice? And VIPs still own it. So to sell some into strength? Yes, but you can see the point of how this works. It really helps us, helps us dramatically. Now, here's what I want to do. I'm going to show you a few more, okay? I think this is very important. I want to, and again, the point here is training our eyes and mind on what to look for to buy and knowing it's good above the white line and it's bad below. By so doing, you're going to make money. Gosh, Pat, how many stocks are you looking at every night? Here's the beauty of it, folks. With those constraints, I have about seven different custom screens on MarketSmith that I developed, and I run them all. Each of them has slightly different constraints. I run them all, and I put it together. And now here's another great tactic for you. I sort it first by industry group rank, secondly, by percent off high, leading groups and leading stocks. And what do I come up with? A great list of stocks, the best of the best. And you go, gosh, Pat, how many are coming up with? Like 500 you got to look through every night? No. Um, right now, I ran them this weekend, about 120 stocks, that's it. That's all. How long does it take you to go through 120 charts? It's a piece of cake. You go through them, you look at them, you study them, and you know that some of those stock, you, first off, you know every stock you're looking at has the traits and the characteristics to be a monster stock. All of them. Okay? Can't stress that enough. Which is another good book by John Boyk, by the way. B-O-I-K, Monster Stocks. You combine these variables together with good fundamentals and good technicals and you'll make money over and over. It works. It works great. PayPal, look at that buy right here. Look at the volume pickup. Next day, quiet. It's right at the, you know, the middle of December, things are quiet, but it's made a nice move. Is it going to continue? I don't know. That reversal bar there, we sold some off. It makes it easy for us, all right? Now, let's show you some past winners, okay? 
And there's a reason why. This is not a case of, oh, bragging. No, this is a case of let's train our eyes and mind. Here we go. AMD. You say, Patrick, I don't see anything here. I'm in agreement. See that nice long base? Watch this. Train your eyes and mind. You got a high point here, high here, near highs right here. And folks, please know, it doesn't need to be to the penny. Just get close because you're not investing for pennies. Just get close. Clean and simple flat line. A second grader could draw the dang thing with a crayon. When we bought it, earnings were up 200%. It was a leading stock in a leading group. What do we want to do? Hey, let's just push through the line with volume. Oh, surprise, surprise. Look at that. On this bar, the stock did 40 4.8 million shares. On this bar, 135 million shares. It did triple this previous bar. And so we bought it right here, pushing right through 59, bought more. No problem. There it goes. It's good above the white line. It's bad below. Oh, comes down to the white line. But did it breach the white line? Nope. And then you get the payday. There you go. That's nice. Sell some into strength, manage it. Clean and simple. Can't stress that enough. Focus on those and you'll make money. Now I want to show you a few more. And again, please know this. This is not a case of, oh, Pat Walker's bragging. No, it's me trying to teach and coach you what to look for. A lot of people give stock ideas, but they never really explain why. And that to me, is, is not the best thing. And I'm not slamming anybody. Please don't take it that way. I just think it's important to know why. For, for your sake, for your education, picture this. You hook on to some guru, but they never really teach you why. And then something happens to that person. They quit. They're gone. Where are you? You're no better off than when you started. I don't want that. Here's another one for you. Roku. You could say, well, I don't see anything right here. Yeah, it's making a good run here, but check this out. I'm going way back here on this. Nice flat base. This was in a leading group when we bought it. Just going sideways. Now, could I put a lower line here? Connect these highs? Yeah, but it's close enough connecting right there. And it pushes through. Gaps up, lifts off. Look at the volume. Look at the volume surge on that bar. Pick it up right here, 74 to 76, in. I'm gonna make some arch. There you go. Keeps on going. Sell some into strength. Keeps going. Keeps going. Boom. Last year, you see this bar right here? I say this all the time. This is real world, by the way. We own this. I own this. Right here. What did it do on this bar, folks? First off, telltale sign on this bar. Gaps up and reverses down on a pickup in volume. Great chart education for you. The next bar, what's it do? It loses the eight period exponential moving average on a pickup in volume, sell more. And then it goes sideways. But do you wanna see something really neat? Remember I said this, people talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks? Check this out. The stock's kind of rising up and look what's happening here, folks. Volume's dropping off. It's losing some power. Finally, look at the volume surge. It cracks through the 21 exponential moving average Last sale right there, gone. And we got out. There you go. Over and over. That's what we're looking for. I'd like to show you a couple more just to train your eyes and mind on what to look for. Data dog. You say, this looks like a dog right here. You know what? I agree with you. But check this out. Look at the base. You can intersect it here came close to it here, came right up to it here. Just a long base. Let's do this. That's what I was looking at. Nothing fancy. Nothing fancy. All I want to do is take out the tops of these lines. By the way, this stock was a leading stock in a leading group and had either great earnings and or great sales when it was on the page. And you know why I know that? Because if it wasn't, I wouldn't have followed it. That's the bottom line. I don't look at stuff that's not good. I just don't. You say, I might miss something trying to stack the deck. 
As I said, I had four kids in private Christian schools at the same time. I didn't have a paycheck. I needed to make money. Okay. My wife was a stay at home mom raising four kids. She did a great job and I'm grateful for her. So what do we have to do? Make it happen. Boom. Look at that. Check out the volume on this bar is 3.28 million shares. You can say, how do you know that? You see where the V is right there? That's the volume for the day. The volume on this bar, 3.28 million. Volume on this bar, 28.8 million. That is sweet potato pie. That's nice. Starts to lose it, and you finally take it out. But you made great, great money. Let's do, oh, here we go, DraftKings. You say, this thing just kind of blows through here, don't it? But right here, train our eyes and mind. Look at that. Highs here, runs up, just draw a line. This is when we saw it. This stock was in the top 10 groups when it broke out. And again, I stress, stocks that are in the top 10 groups that have a high composite rating and a good chart do not, and a good accumulation distribution rating do not need great earnings and or great sales, okay? In the top 10 groups. You see the volume on that bar though? You see the volume on this bar? It's like, yeah, I guess if it goes across these tops, that'd probably be pretty good. Okay, check this out. What is that folks? It's just a quiet, it's almost an inside day on much less volume than this up bar. That's cool. I like that. Oh, baby, look at the, look at that move. Look at the volume. On this bar, the stock did, we'll call it 30 million shares. And again, just to help you, you see right there, that's the volume for the day. I put the cursor on the bar and it shows 30 million, 29.96. This bar here, 50 million shares. That's awesome. Look at that. Is that nice? That's good. That's what we're after. It sells into strength. You look great. Beautiful. That's a good move, by the way. That's a 50% move right there, folks. In what, three weeks? That's what we're after. I stress though, do they all do that? No, nothing does it all the time. If you can remember that, life will be easier. I stress. I'm going to show you another one. All these were keyless stocks, by the way. In fact, we're writing a book. You see this page right here? We're writing a book on this. It's called 20 Great Stock Market Winners. We've got volumes one and two being put together. These are high resolution charts with annotations on them, with chart analysis that shows us, shows you why we bought it, where we bought it, where we sold it, and why with fundamental data in it, fundamental data. Watch this. And you can say, yeah, that's pretty good, I guess, Pat. Just going sideways, yeah, it's a pretty good run. Look at that, check it out. Stock lifts up on volume, right? Big reversal bar, and then look what the volume does. Volume drops off. What does that tell us? That there's not a lot of people who owned it down here that are eager to sell. It's just going sideways. You got a high on this bar and a high on this bar. Note something. Note the volume pickup on this bar. Is that nice? That's what we look for. We're constantly looking for that price and volume characteristics. Advance it. Right up to the line on low volume. Isn't that nice? Advance it. Boom. Pushes through. Volume. Buy. Keyless stock. Buy. And what happens? And you probably all know this. Loose. You could sell a little bit into that if you want. Come down to the 50-day, but you own it down here. And you know what it did. Entry right there. Earnings were up 800% when it 
when it was on the key list and we bought it. 800%. There you go. That's what you're after. We'll enlarge this back again. Make it easier for the eyes to see. All right. So I just want to clarify, these are things that we're looking for. Now, I want to take it a step further. I want to show you a couple of others. And these two have been huge for us. And remember this, foundation, leading stocks in leading groups. If you can remember that and turn off the noise, you'll do better. And as I said, when I say leading stocks, I do mean stocks that have either great earnings and are great sales. And by the way, I do stress, I, I, I gotta tell you this, none of, the internet didn't exist when I started, all right? There, there was no internet. I used to get my charts delivered to me in the US mail on Sunday and I paid extra for them, daily graphs. So you know what I used to do? I used to print out the charts I was interested in and I made four columns of four to five charts and I taped them together in rows and then I thumbtacked them to a, bu a bulletin board cork board right next to my desk. And you know what that was? That was my list for the week. That's it. That was it. And um, we got by that way. No real time charting. And it worked fine. It worked fine. So I just have to share this with all of you. The tools that you have are awesome. Awesome. But I do encourage you, don't get wrapped up in a whole lot of different indicators. I just wanted to share this with you because it can really get confusing. Oscillators don't pay. Opinions don't pay. Forecasts don't pay. Analysts don't pay. One thing pays. Price pays. Turn off that noise and you'll be better. And I will also tell you this, true confession, I don't even have cable TV in my office. There's too much high emotion there and you'll be better without it. I just, I just wanted to share that with you. I know I've got off on a tangent, but it, it will help you, I promise. Okay, so let's continue here. I'm gonna show you this one right here. Tesla. We had an entry right here. See that buy? See the volume pick up? I'll make it a little larger for you. Nice base. Look at the volume pick up. On this bar, the stock did 61 million shares. On this bar, 78 million shares. Buy right here around 465, 466. Okay. And it's still going. That's almost 200 points. We're still in it. It's walking up the eight period. It has never touched the 21 period exponential moving average line. Someday it probably will. But until then, do we need to do anything with it? No, it's good. Sell some into strength, fine. But then watch this. Right here. Clean and simple, downward sloping trend line. You want to see something that's beautiful? Check this out. Here's the highs. Right support underneath the 21. It's above the rising 50 way. It's a leading stock and a leading group, and it pushes through. We talk about keeping losses small. Here you go. It's good above the white line, and it's bad below. We're fine. There you go. Clean and simple. If you can remember that, life's good. Here's another one right here. By the way, we owned these. Okay, I don't want you to think like I'm making this up. Look at the volume pick up there. Now, let's do the real world. Let's suppose that we bought this here, and I do stress, we didn't buy it up here. We bought it pushing through the white line. And I'm going to be real specific with you. This is the real world. It's not textbook. When a stock is breaking out, this is a million dollar tactic for you. When a stock is breaking through a clean and simple base on the daily chart, do yourself a favor. Look at the 30 minute chart and look at the hourly chart and look for that volume surge. 
If you've got it, it's a buy. If it doesn't, don't buy it. Don't buy it. So I'm going to say it again for you. Look at the daily chart. You can go weekly too. Leading stocks and leading groups. Look for that volume surge on the daily chart and fine tune it down to the hourly and 30 minute. I don't really want to take it down to 10 and five and all that crud, okay? Look for that volume surge. You got it? Buy it. And another key point, you buy it breaking through that line. You, this is why we are so hung up on making sure it's a pattern everybody can see. I want everybody to know it because it increases the odds they'll buy too. And how is that going to be reflected? It's going to be reflected in volume. No volume means people may see it, but they're not buying. Guess what? I'm not a hero. They're not buying. I'm not buying either. It's that simple. That's a, that's a very valuable lesson for you. If you couldn't tell, I like this. This is fun. So entries right there. Isn't that nice? And see this nice space right here? Going sideways, hit the highs here a couple of days, pulls back on volume, starts to go up on steadily pick up in volume. Hey, if it pushes through these tops right here, boy, that'd be pretty good, wouldn't it? And again, at the time, remember, Tesla had either great earnings and or great sales back here. All right. This is not a case of, oh, they didn't have anything going for them. And it was also in the top 10 or 20 leading groups. Oh, nothing really great there. Boom. Look at that volume pickup, folks. That's huge. And right in here, taking out the highs, we're in. There you go. And there you go. And there you go. You get my point, okay? You understand what I'm looking at there and how it works. So let's go back here because we can find more. Did Roku, Paylocity. I want to round this out. What time is it? It's 419. We're going to do one more, one more. And it's this stock, NEO. This has been very good for us. And I just have to show you this. This is when it came up on the radar. You connect a high here and here, and it comes up close to it. And team, what do you notice? Note the volume pickup here. It's starting to approach that line, clean and simple tops, and it's doing it on a pickup in volume. See this? What do we look for? Gosh, if it pushes through that clean and simple line that a fifth grader could see, probably a fourth grader could see, maybe even a third grader, if it does it with volume, gosh, that'd be pretty dang good, wouldn't it? I'd like that. Boom. Folks, you see that volume surge? I say it again. People talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks. They vote it. The volume on this bar is 90, and you can see where I'm getting it from. See where it says V? I put the cursor on that bar, it says 98.697 million, 98 million, okay, on that bar. The next bar, 299 million. People talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks. Guess what, folks? They voted. Look at that. Clean and simple entry. Now, if it had fallen back below the white line, tells me I'm wrong, you sell for a very small loss. And here's the beautiful thing. Another key point for you, when do you buy this? Oh, I'll buy it at the close. No, when it's pushing through that line and it has volume coming into it on the hourly or 30 minute, you buy it, you're in. As it starts to keep going, add to it. And we did, we did. And it does this. And then it forms another pattern here. See the volume pick up on that bar? Another little shelf forming. Oh, look at that, just going sideways, you know, high here and higher, nothing fancy. Okay, comes up to the line, but no real volume. Down a bit on a slight pickup in volume, but it's just basing, starts to pick up, but on no volume. Down on a slight pickup in volume, but the pattern's still intact. Down a bit, but note something here. This is a valuable lesson right there. See where it gapped down? It fell and it closed above where it opened. It was met with support. It opened here and it closed here. 
quiet bar, starts to pick up, nothing really. Boom, look at the volume pickup. Everybody saw this, everybody, we saw it. And it lifts, look at that volume. On this bar, the stock did a volume of 42.7 million shares. This bar, 164 million, almost four times the volume on this bar. As I say, people talk with their mouths and vote with their pocketbooks. They voted and it goes. And it's not super exciting, but it makes a nice move. Lifts up to here. Look at that volume, is that sweet? That's a good move, by the way, folks. From 20, 27, 28, that's almost a 50% gain just there. And it goes sideways, starts to pick up. Look at this bar right here. See the volume pick up? Maybe if it pushes through that line on volume, you could buy more. Not, nothing there. Oh, surprise, surprise. Look at that right here. On this bar, the stock did 89 million shares, 214 million two times as much as the previous bar. They voted. And note this bar, quiet inside bar on much less volume. What's the moral? It's good above the white line, it's bad below. It's good above the clean and simple white line, it's bad below. And the same thing is true here. This is good money. This has been one of our biggest winners this year. Flapping around a little bit, going sideways, no power, no power right here. So do we buy more here? No, it didn't push with volume. Look, see that? And it's just going sideways. And this is today, 1229, coming to the end of the year. See that line I'm drawing here? Perhaps if it takes out these tops with volume, bouncing off the 50 day, maybe we'll buy more. There you go. By the way, when we bought this, it was in the top 10 groups. The relative strength was over 90 when we bought. The composite rating was over 90 when we bought. And that first buy, revenues were up 450% when we bought it. There's a recipe for a cake right there. And off to the races. That's where it goes. We talk about keeping losses small, low drawdowns. Right here, folks, it's good above the white line. It's bad below. It's good above the white line, it's bad below. Same here, good above, bad below. Eight to 10% losses, no way. We keep them much smaller. Why? Because we know it's a statistical fact. And again, I taught statistics on a university level. I'm big on numbers. We have an edge. We know what to look for. And you know what's great? You just invested your time. You didn't spend your time. You invested your time. So guess what? Now you know it. And that's awesome. That's why I do this is to help people. Because years ago, I lost a lot of sleep over this, trying to figure it out. And I want to share it with you. I just, my goal is this to help people. I don't know if we have questions or anything like that, Owen. Yeah, we but, do. We got a few questions. Okay, let's rock and roll with it, sir. All right. Nanda wants to know, earnings year over year or quarter over quarter? Earnings versus revenue. I think there's some confusion. Actually, I got an email from somebody yesterday that was asking the same, the same question is, do you look at earnings year over year or quarter over quarter? And how do you define revenue, earnings, all that stuff right. in market? Awesome space. question. I thank you for asking. I love your questions. By the way, I'll share this with you. This is my foundation. There are no stupid questions. None. Ever. There are only stupid answers, but there are no stupid questions. And I really mean that sincerely. Anybody who comes across and thinks, oh, that's not a good question. That's condescending. That's not good teaching. That does not create a positive environment where you can sit there and study and learn. So great question. Here's what we have. Earnings year over year. Earnings this quarter versus earnings a year ago quarter. I'm not concerned with Sequential earnings and revenue growth is nice. I like that, but earnings this year, this quarter versus a year ago quarter, or revenues this quarter versus a year ago, one or the other. And in both instances, I like them over 40%. And I do stress, and this is a great question, great question. You don't need both. 
It's nice if you have both, but you don't need both. You just need one or the other. Earnings 40% or higher or revenues 40% or higher. That's, and it works like a champ. It works like a champ. And always please remember this, please. And I can't stress this enough. Will you have situations where it doesn't work out? Well, sure. But if you have a clean and simple entry, you have a clean and simple exit for a much smaller loss. You don't have to wait for seven to 10%. That's crazy. You get a couple of those nicks, it gets in your head. There's two types of capital in the market. There's financial capital and emotional capital. Protect both of them. Anyway, I hope that helps you. Great question. Hit me with another one, good buddy. Jeff wants to know, do you buy breakouts late in the day? Great question, Jeff. Yes, I will buy a breakout anytime during the day with these constraints. And we all know about the groups and, you know, da -da 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 -da, revenues and earnings. Okay, we know all that. You've got that down, folks. I want to see when it's pushing through the pivot. I want to see volume. If it's later in the day, I would. I want to see a good pickup in volume later in the day. If not, that will make me very hesitant. And when it's pushing through, I want to see a volume surge on that 30 or hourly chart into the close. I need that. That is very important. If, and I'm going to take it a step further, I'm going to be really precise for everybody. If you have a stock breaking out and the market closes in the half an hour and that stock still has low volume, I will not buy it. Okay. I want on a breakout, I want a good pickup in average daily volume over the previous days. If it's not there, I won't buy it. And somebody says, well, you might miss something. I'll stack the deck in my favor. Most stocks, most super stocks that we look at when they go, and again, you're talking to a guy that's been doing this since 1986, super stocks blow through that pivot on volume. If it doesn't, even if it's late in the day, you know what it means? Other people saw it, but they ain't buying. That's how we do it. Good question though. All right, we got a couple questions on stop losses. Batu and, uh, and Bob want to know, uh, first of all, what's your average stop loss? And then what is your initial stop loss when buying a breakout? Great question. I look, by the way, I have to compliment all you. These are great questions. And I'm not saying that to patronize you. You've given me your time and I take it very seriously. This is why I'm hung up on these simple flat bases or simple cup and handle patterns, just simple sideways patterns. And it's really easy, folks. It's good above the white line and it's bad below. If it's going below the white line, guess what? I'm going to be selling some because the best ones just push away. And I do stress this. If they don't, I will sell. And let's quantify this statement. You can say, Patrick, you say some. What do you mean? Let's, let, we could do percentages or, or let's do shares. We'll do shares here. You can transpose percentages and I'll do both for you. If you buy 100 shares, if it's fallen below that line into the close, I'm selling at least half my shares. That's it. Half, 50 shares if I'm buying, if I bought 100, if, um, if I bought 200 and I'm selling 50%, I'm selling 100 of my shares. And you will learn this. I can't stress. The best ones just push away with a flood in volume. And if they don't, that's a red flag. If it starts to come back down, I'm taking some off. I will not ever have a major problem. And I need to tell you this. Bill O'Neill says this off the record, and I've repeat myself. You know, they talk about 7 and 8%. I will tell you this. Bill O'Neill used to say he really prefers closer to 3 to 5%. Okay? There you go. And that's, that's the truth. So there you go. Yeah, and I will say, Pat, that one of the most difficult things to do is to sell off those shares. I know that, you know, I've been working together for a long time and watching the, the Twitter feed, sometimes you'll be selling off half a position or a third of a position. I'll look at the chart and, and my, my brain will, it doesn't do this too much anymore, but it did when we first, when we first started. My yeah. brain would look at the chart and go, well, that's not too bad. I wonder what he's selling that for. It's hard to sell. And so sometimes I would do my own thing. And then I'd find out later that you were right. 
So <laughs> I love it. Anyway, but, it's uh, oh, you're, it definitely you're kind works. of say that, but I, I, you know, hey, I'm not right all. You know, hey, the one thing I will do though, to be wrong is bad, but to stay wrong is a disaster. And Owen, you know this. By the way, for those yeah. of you who don't know, I met Owen at the IBD meetup. Okay. He was one of the faithful attendants. I'm going back probably, I don't know how many years ago, Owen, 12 years ago. So Owen, by the way, this is why I like working Owen. He's a technological wizard, but the man knows stocks. Holy Toledo. And he'll forget more about options than I'll ever know. So anyway, he's great to work with. Go ahead and hit me, good buddy. Mark wants to know, when do you sell into strength? Do you have percentage points that you sell into strength? He wants to know, do you mark off 15, 20, 25% or how do you do it? Great question. What I will look for, and Mark, I appreciate that question. I am looking for spots where there might be pausing action. And where will pausing action be evident? It will be evident in the daily chart. It will be evident in maybe the hourly or 30 minute chart where the stock may be putting in a really ugly reversal bar on volume. And if it's doing that, I may take, I may not, I hate to use the word take, I may sell 20%, but I won't sell at all. I won't sell at all. I don't know if anybody's ever been here before. I'm going to, be, true confession, this used to drive me up the wall. Two things, A, not limiting a loss. I learned that real quick because I had four kids that I had to feed, okay, off investing profits. But I'll tell you, you know what really, and there's ladies listening, so I'm keeping it clean. What really used to upset me is, oh, I got a good gain. I'm, I'm locking it in and I sell and the thing keeps going up. And that's why I'm really big on trend following. I, if you notice on my charts, by the way, you're not going to see any oscillators or anything on there. I'm riding trends for as long as possible. And I will also tell you this, and this is a, this is true confession. I get a good trend. I don't even have the stock on my front page. You can say, oh, come on. See down here, you see where it says Pat? You see where it says Pat one? If I got stocks that have great long trends, they go on the Pat one page. I don't even, I have a price alert set. I don't even look at them during the day. Why? Let them work. So there you go. Sorry. Okay. John wants to know what your sell signals are. I assume sell signals for, for losses. And also I'm going to dovetail and work this in. Uh, uh, Henrique, Henrique wants to know, on the stop loss, still on the stop loss, I got stopped out of Zoom and Docu and then ended up missing the whole trend. How to counter that? Great question. Um, what was the first part of the question? The first ones are, what are your sell signals? So I, I'm, I'm assuming that, that John is asking, you know, when something's rolling over, like Henrique is saying here, it's rolling over, so I got out, right? But yep. when, you know, how do you, how do you make that determination? And then how do you, uh, how do you get back in and so you don't miss the trend? Good question. I will look at the daily chart. And if it is, we'll use that phrase. If it's rolling over, if I got a stock where I'm up 10 or 20%, all right, and it's starting to fall back down again, I'm going to play defense, especially if the market isn't good or if the market's choppy. And if I see other stocks doing the same thing, stocks don't act alone. If I see a slew of stocks that are starting to act really crummy, guess what? I'm watching them. The market leaders, I got them on my front page. The max list stocks, not all of them, but some of them. I'm watching the market action. And if it's getting choppy, I know that I need to play defense and I will take some off. I will, let's quantify that 20%, maybe 25%. And then I have to say this, and this is very important. This is for all of us, me included. Never, never let a 20% plus profit on a stock turn into a loss, never. And then I'm gonna say this too, and this is very important. I don't buy low price stocks. I don't scalp. I'm not in it for 25 cents. Nothing's worse than selling a stock and it's seeing it go higher. I encourage all of you, stick with stocks over 10 or $12 a share that trade at least 200 or 300,000 shares a day with the other constraints I talked about before. If you'll do that, you will dramatically improve your investing odds. I don't mess around with the low price stocks. Okay. In fact, I'll share this with you. I've been doing this a long time. I have never, and I know a lot of people that have invested, okay, through the years. I've never 
met a person who's made good money with low price stocks consistently. Never. So anyway, Evelyn, that answer like that? To, pardon me. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Evelyn would like to know what do you do in a market? What do you, what do, you do in a correction? Great question. You know what I'll do? Two things, Evelyn, and this is a great question for all of us. I will do one of two things. I will sit out and do nothing. And you go, what, what? That's crazy. No, I will tell you something, folks. You see this right here? You know what this can turn into really quick? This sucker can turn into a video slot machine. I gotta do something. That's crazy. No, when things get sloppy, I'll sit and do nothing. I will wait and wait and wait. And I'm gonna give you a classic example right here. This is the real world. You say, oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Watch this. When it was doing this right here, and there's VIPs listening right now, and I wish some of them could chime in, but I know they can't. And I, you know, I'm not going to ask you to. This big decline here, when it's getting it ripped, we were out. The sucker's below the moving averages. It's dropping like a rock. There's heavy volume. I ain't messing around with it. I wait. What am I waiting for here? And after doing this, I, hey, folks, I was there for the crash of 87, like I said, okay? You know what I wait for? When I see action like this, and I'm going to give you your gift. This is your gift. Wait on the daily and, and or weekly charts. Wait for a clean and simple higher low. See right here? You got a lower low versus here. This low is lower than this low. 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 And I'm, by the way, I'm not trying to sound like a jerk. Hey, I'm trying to help you. Okay. This is the real world. And then it goes up and then it falls. And then it starts to pick up. And what do you have here, team? You have a higher low. This low is higher than this low. And right in here, you see the volume pick up right in here. We started to buy. There you go. There you go. So anyway, when things are rocky, I'll do nothing. In fact, I will share this with you, true confession. And there's people in here have known me for, gee whiz, over 20 years that I know they're listening. You know what I used to do a lot of in this period of time when things got screwed on? I go mountain biking. I go out and go riding. Just get away. I told, I told Mark, you know, say, hey, Maggie, I'm leaving. I'm going to do something. So I go out, get away from it. Reason why? So I don't do something stupid. Just leave it alone. Anyway, hit me with another one. I don't want to take too much of people's time. Okay. Michael says he's, he wants to know about getting out uh, intraday. He's talking about a stock that's losing the eight, for example. Do you get out intraday, intraday or do you wait until the end of the day? Because he says you really won't know if it breaks the eight until the end of the day. Great question. Excellent. Michael, thank you. Here's a real world example. You see this right here? We're buying it. I do believe we either bought here, lifting up here, most likely on this day. In fact, I'm confident it was on this day. It gapped up. We're picking some up, okay? Pushing above these tops, all right? By the way, this stock's got the number. It's anointed, all right? But do you see how this closed? It gapped up. It ran up. It took out the highs of this bar, okay? And it reversed and closed down. When it ran up and started reversing down, and the market was also sloppy too. You see that? You can't catch me in a lie. See that 25%? Here's VIPs in here that know this. We sold 25% off. Why? Because the best ones don't do this. They gap up or they, they lift and they run. If they don't, this is a bad bar, folks. It gapped up. I want to show this again. I'm going to make it bigger for you. There you go. Here's the close. The next day it gapped up. It ran up. It took out the highs. And we bought some, had good volume when it was doing, but then it reversed down, the market was sloppy. What did we do? Close near the lows. Hey, I'm not gonna have a problem. We sold 25% of our shares off for an extremely small loss, okay? Probably less than maybe two points, two points on 107, 108 bucks. There you go. That's how we run it. Anyway. There you go, Owen, hit me with another one. Okay, one more. Bob says uh, he wants to know if you have a scan for stocks that have a high relative strength. Yes, I do. You bet I do. It's one of the screens that I look at. 
but I have, Bob, this is a great question. This is for everybody. I have, um, and again, I've got about nine, eight or nine screens, maybe 10, I don't know, on Market Smith. One of the things, all my screens, I'm going to be blunt, all my screens, I don't look at stocks with low relative strength. I think all my screens have a relative strength of at least 80 or 85. All of them, okay? All of them, not some of them, all of them have stocks within 20% of 52 week highs. All of them, okay? Um, I have found that if I lean just on relative strength, it gets riskier, which is why I also combine through my years of research, leading groups and stocks that have either great earnings and or great sales, or there's one variable that I do lean on, good re or two, good relative strength with a high composite rating. If it has both of those, that could be a potential buy. If it's in a good group and it is pushing through clean and simple tops with volume. Now, I know I just threw a lot out at you right there, but I, as I said, folks, given my background, I'm wired really tight. I had to be, not just from the investing side, but also, you know, the survival skill stuff. I want people to make money, but more importantly than that, I want you all to survive literally survive so that you don't blow your account up. And that's why the whole theme of this meetup was keeping losses extremely small. I have losses. We all have losses. The only investor that doesn't is a liar. But what sets us apart? What makes us better? What will make you better? Controlling those losses. And it works. It works like a champ. And then you know what you do? I'm going to tell you what you do. Forget about it. The best investors have short-term memory. Yeah, they remember their mistake, but don't dwell on it. Don't, don't ponder it. Okay. Don't tear it apart. Please. You've got, there's two types of capital in the market. I've said this before. There's financial and there's emotional. And it's really important to, to control both of them. It was about 13 years ago, um, my best friend was diagnosed with cancer, leukemia. And um, I will tell you this, I had to quit trading. I had to quit investing because it was tearing me apart. And I was with him the day he started chemotherapy and I was with him the night he died. So anyway, there's times to pull back. And I'm not saying that to be a downer, but we all have different things going on in life. Just know that there's times just to take away, just pull back from it. It's going to be there. The market's not going to go anywhere. It's here today. It'll be here next week, next year, the next 30 years, the next lifetime. Just get in line with it. And it's a lot of fun. Anyway, any others, Owen? Uh, if you want to keep going for just a few more minutes, there's a couple sure. more. Um, when you, Arnie wants to know, when you, uh, when you enter a trade, do you have a target price in mind at which you're going to sell? That is a great question. I'll repeat that question. I got to close my door because I think somebody's home. Hold on just a second here in the office. There we go. It's nice when you got one of these rolling chairs, you can just roll around the office. I feel like a kid in an amusement park. Okay, so can you say that question one more time for me? Because I want to make sure I get it right, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have a target price in mind? When you first enter a trade, when you buy a stock, do you have a target price in mind at which you're going to sell? Great question. No, no, I do not. And you say, oh, don't be a smarty pants, Pat. No, I don't. I don't know. I, I don't know the future. I, this is my own quote. When we don't know the future, we see the future much clearly, much more clearly. I just get in line with what is and I will ride it for as long as possible. If there's pausing in it, in the chart formation on a daily chart, maybe I'll sell 20% off to guarantee profits. I said this before and I'll say it again. This quote, you'll never go broke taking a profit is a blatant lie. If your losses are bigger than your profits, you'll go broke, which is why it is so important for me and for you when you get a good one 
ride some of those shares as long as humanly possible. It will help you. And after you've become more proficient, then and only then do you start buying more shares. That will help you. That will help you dramatically. But never, I'm going to make this point for all of you, and I'm speaking from my heart. Please, please never get in the mode of averaging down. You are wrong. Staying wrong in the market is lethal. And adding more insult to injury can wreck you. It'll wreck you financially, and it will wreck you psychologically. And I know what it's like to get ripped in a stock, okay? I, I mean, I know what it's like to lose a couple hundred thousand bucks and not know because you're up in the mountains and, and I have no internet. I'm aware of it. So, okay, Owen, hit me with another, that one, by the way, that was 20 plus years ago. So anyway, hit me with another one, good buddy. All right, let's wrap it up with this. this we get this question quite a bit. Uh, people have questions about position sizing. Jaden wants to know, how do you determine position sizing? Jaden, great question. What do I look for? Simple. On a clean and simple base breakout, like, let's do the real world. Neo, base breakouts, go bigger. All right? Tesla, let me shrink this a bit. I'm sorry. Go bigger. We're just going to run through some some. Apple, breaking through here. Watch this, folks. See these tops right here? You can say, boy, that's a great big cup, Patrick. And you're correct. Here's the weekly, excuse me, monthly. I'm sorry, here's the weekly. Was it extended to get to that pivot price up here, folks? Yes. So guess what? Pardon me. See these longer brace breakouts on the weekly? You see them on the daily, these base breakouts? Then you take a look at this one. Did it take a lot of energy to get there? Yes. Was it breaking out? Yes. But because it took a big move to get to that pivot price, did we buy as many shares? No. No. Why? Because it's extended from these bottoms. It's made a big move to get, it's almost like a horse. This horse has already galloped quite a bit. It might be a little out of breath. So by default, buy less shares on those. Buy more shares on breakouts that are not super extended. Buy less shares on a stock that had to make a decent move to get your breakout. And if it's not really clean, don't buy it at all. This was a maxless stock, by the way, okay? And I love maxless stocks. So anyway, does that clarify that pretty good, Owen? Sorry, I had it on mute, I was typing. Um, yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Owen always has me on mute. I love it. No, any other questions, sir? I think that I think that does it. Well, this is great. Here we go. All right, we're 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 you know going to wrap this up. Owen, I hope I hope that uh, I hope that was a wrap and that everything was good with it. That's good. Excellent. Hey, thank you all very much. Uh, we'll have another webinar. You got any questions? Drop us a line. Hey, thank you all very much. I wish each of you, all of you, wherever you are. Happy New Year. Thank you for watching the video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit like. Maybe hit that subscribe button. We come up with new content nearly every day. Also, check out the videos on the right. YouTube recommends the one on the top, and the bottom one is something we thought you might enjoy. See you next time.